Welcome to another geometry video. We are in section 11-3 and we are now talking about the surface area of pyramids and cones. So let's get into some vocabulary with pyramids and cones so then we can then uh, start using that vocabulary to apply it to formulas. First of all, what is a pyramid? A pyramid is a 3D solid with only one base. and all the lateral uh, faces meet at a single vertex. So right here is a picture of a pyramid for you. Now the lateral faces of a pyramid are going to be triangles and they're basically the sides of the pyramid, okay? So the sides of the of a pyramid shaped like triangles or they really are triangles that meet at a single point. Now that point that the lateral faces are meeting at is called the vertex. And in this picture right here is the vertex. So the vertex is basically the top of the pyramid. The point at the top of the, py of the pyramid is a way you could think about it. Now, just like with our other lesson of having altitude and height of prisms, pyramids and cones also have altitudes or heights. And the way that we're gonna like find the altitude or height is it's going to be the perpendicular distance from the base to the vertex. So if we're looking in our picture up here, this line right here would be an altitude because it's going, it's perpendicular from the base all the way up to the vertex, but also right here in this other picture, here is the height or altitude. Now we also have something that's unique to pyramids and cones, and that's something called slant height. Slant height is going to go along the outside of the pyramid, along the edge of the face, or really through the center of the face. Um, <coughs> excuse me, but it's going from the base of the face up to the vertex. And it's called slant height because those edges are right slanted. So um, slant height is how tall, basically how tall a lateral face is and it basically goes from the bottom to the vertex. basically how that works. Now, once again, we have something very similar to our previous lesson when we talk about lateral area. Lateral area is going to be the area of all the sides that are not the base. So the area of all the sides not including the base. And if we want a formula for that, the lateral area, LA, is equal to one half the perimeter of the base times L, or the slant height. So that's something that's kind of different than what we've had before. So notice how capital L stands for, and the capital A is lateral area, but lowercase L is going to be slant height. So this right here is slant height. P is perimeter, and I'll say of the base, just so you know what we're talking about. And then LA is, of course, lateral area. Okay, 
Now, just like before, surface area is going to have all of the sides and then it's going to include the bottom of the pyramid as well. So surface area is the area of all the sides of the pyramid. That formula is going to be surface area is equal to, so we want the lateral area in there again, um, but then we're also gonna add the base. So it's gonna be surface area is equal to lateral area plus big B for base. Now we also have something called a cone in this section and down here is an image of a cone. A cone is going to be a solid with one base that is a circle. So the difference here is the base is a circle here while the base up here is gonna be like a polygon, okay? So for a cone, it's going to be a 3D solid with one base that is a circle. All right, now we do have formulas for lateral area and surface area of cones as well. So the lateral area is going to be pi times the radius times um, L. And then the surface area is going to equal pi times the radius times L plus pi r squared because we've got to add the bottom in. So surface area includes the base, lateral area does not. All right. Now that we have this vocabulary in this front side of the page, let's turn that paper over and we are gonna do some calculations with this. We are gonna find the surface area of this square pyramid. So how do we find surface area? We need the formula. Surface area is going to be the lateral area plus the base but we need to know how to find the lateral area. Well, lateral area is one half perimeter times the slant height and the base, your, your formula for the base is gonna change based off of what type of shape is the base of the pyramid because pyramids can have all different types of bases. This one is a square. It might have um, an octagon for a base or something like that. So based off of what type of shape it is, this formula that you're gonna use for big B might change. But because this is a square, and it tells us that right here, it's a square pyramid, um, it's just length times width or side squared or whatever you wanna say. So I'm gonna say base is equal to uh, length times width, okay. Now we can start substituting into those. So for lateral area, we're gonna say one half times the perimeter. So the perimeter is the distance around the base. And all of these are 7.5. So 7.5 plus 7.5, so on and so forth. So 7.5, four times is 30. Okay, so it's got a perimeter of 30 and a slant height of 12. When we put that into our calculator, we are getting 180. So right now, the lateral area is 180. This 180 corresponds with the lateral area right there. Okay, now we need to find the area of the base because we're finding the surface area. So we need to know everything in this. The surface, or, or um, the area of the base is gonna be this square. So we are gonna take 7.5 times 7.5 And when we do that, we get 56.25. Okay, perfect. This 56.25 represents the big base of the pyramid. But we haven't found the total surface area. Surface area is when we take those two numbers and add them up. So let's do that now. Surface area is going to equal 180 plus 56.25. When we put that into our calculators, we are getting 236.25. And then I'm gonna put my unit on there. Now this is surface, it's area. So our unit is gonna be squared. There we go. 
Now what happens when the base is not a simple shape or something that you're quite as common with? Notice in example two, it says find the surface area of the hexagonal pyramid. So now we know the base of the pyramid is a hexagon. This has six sides. Well, we still have the same basic formula of surface area is equal to lateral area plus um, the base. Now, we can easily figure out lateral area. We know that's going to be the same formula of one half perimeter times the slant height. The base, this is going to be a formula that you have been introduced to, to before in this class, but it's been a while since we've used it. It's going to be one half opossum perimeter. So we covered that in our area unit. So now we can start substituting into these. So we need one half times the perimeter. Now, if this, we're gonna say this is a regular hexagon, so that means all of the sides are four, okay? So we've got four here and four here and four here. So four, six times is gonna be 24. So that's the perimeter of the base. And then we also need um, the slant height. Well, the slant height is given to us right here and it is eight. Okay, when we put that into our calculators, we are getting 96. So 96 is only the lateral area. That's what we calculated right here, okay? Now we need to find the base of the shape as well, the area of the base, so that we can add it all up. So that is going to be one half times the apothem. Now remember the apothem goes from the center of the polygon to the center of an edge perpendicularly. So this apothem is labeled right here and it's 3.46 times the perimeter. Now we don't have to calculate the perimeter again. We already know it from this up here. The perimeter is 24. Okay, let's multiply that together. And when I do that, I'm getting 41.52. Now, I think something that's really easy to do is to accidentally stop working too soon because there's all these little pieces to this. We have not found the entire surface area. We found the lateral area, which is this number, and we found the area of the base, which is this number. To get the surface area, we gotta add all of that up together. And once we do that, then we're gonna get it. So the surface area is going to equal 96 plus 41.52. When we add those up, I am getting 137.52 and then we've got square meters. Okay, we've got one more example and that is finding surface areas of cones. The surface area for a cone, the formula is um, pi RL, if I remember, let's look it up again. We do have it right here, so that'll be helpful. Pi RL, so pi times the radius times the slant height, plus pi R squared, okay. Pi times the radius times the slant height, plus pi R squared, okay. So let's substitute into this formula for this um, triangle right here. So we know surface area is equal to pi times the radius, which is five, times the slant height, but notice we do not have a slant height here, so we have a little bit of an issue. We do have the altitude, but that's not what slant height is. Altitude and slant height are different. So notice we kind of have this right triangle, but we're missing a side. So there is a strategy that we have for finding that missing side. It's the Pythagorean theorem. We've done the Pythagorean theorem plenty of times. So this is just gonna be a little side scratch work. We're gonna take five squared plus 12 squared to figure out what C squared is. So that's 25 plus 144 is equal to C squared. When I take 144 and add 25 to it, I get 169. So 169 is equal to C squared. We're square rooting both sides. I get 13 is equal to C. Okay, that 13 is this slant height. So we had to kind of take a little, you know, trip in order to find that 
slant height, so then we could put that into our actual formula. So we're gonna put 13 in for L, and then we're gonna add pi times five squared. Okay, now we're ready to actually start doing this. So the surface area, I'm just gonna leave pi in it for right now. So five times 13 is 65. So I've got 65 pi plus 25 pi. It's 25 because five squared means five times five. When we add those up, we're getting 90 pi. Now this right here is in terms of pi and that's fine. But sometimes it will ask you to round. It's just kind of according to how the question is worded. So if you do need to round, then all you have to do is multiply that pi out. And we are going to get surface area is equal to 282.74 square inches. There we go. Let's do that one more time with this example. So I'm just plugging into this formula. Like this is the formula that I'm actually using over and over, but with my specific numbers in my problem right here. So I've got surface area is equal to pi times the radius, which is five, times the slant height. We were given it this time, which is 10. And then we're gonna add pi r squared, which is gonna be five squared. So now if I leave it in terms of pi, all I gotta do is take five times 10, which is 50, and then tack the pi back onto it because this means pi times five times 10. So it's all multiplication. And then it's gonna be plus 25 pi. If we add that up, we're gonna have 75 pi um, square centimeters. Now this is fine if we have it in terms of pi, if that's what the directions tell us to do. But if we need to round it, then all you have to do is type literally in your calculator 75 times pi, just like this. 75 times pi, and then once you hit equals, it's obviously going to give you a really big decimal. So let's just round to the hundreds place. That's going to be 235.62 approximately square centimeters. All right. Both of these are the same answer, basically. It's just one is rounded and one is left in terms of pi. And according to what your directions tell you to do, that's what you're going to want to, or that's how you're going to want to uh, leave your answer. But that is all for today's set of notes. I hope this has been helpful for you. And of course, if you have questions, always feel free to ask me.